Hi, I'm Mary Pua, the chemistry guru, and you are watching H2 Chem X, making H2 chemistry simpler, one video at a time. Hi everyone, in this video, we'll go through how to draw the top cost diagram of simple molecules and ions. Now we have five guidelines that we can use to draw the top cost diagram. Number one, the central atom usually requires small bonds to be stable, so it has a tendency for it to sit at the center and form more bonds with the surrounding atoms. Number two, the central atom will distribute its electrons to its surrounding atoms to make all of them stable. Now after distribution of electrons to the surrounding atoms, we have to look back at the central atom to make sure that all the electrons of the central atom are counted for. Number three, atoms form the same number of bonds as the number of additional electrons required for stability. For example, hydrogen and halogen requires one electron to be stable, so therefore there's a tendency for it to form one bond. Similarly, oxygen requires two electrons to be stable, so oxygen has a tendency to form two bonds. Nitrogen needs three electrons, will form three bonds. Carbon needs four electrons, so therefore it will form four bonds. Number four, central atom will expand octet to form more bonds if necessary. Now, if the central atom can expand octet, then in general it would because forming more bonds means that more energy is released. So therefore, the overall configuration of the particular species will be more stable. Now, only period 2 elements cannot expand octet. Number 5. Adding or removing electrons for ions depend on the electronegativity. Now, for cations, remove the electrons from the atom that is less electronegative because it's more willing to give up the electron. For anions, when we add the electron in, we give the electron to the more electronegative uh, atom because it likes the electron more. Now we have gone through these five guidelines, let's take a look at some examples. The first example that we're going through is for NO2, nitrogen dioxide. Now when I compare nitrogen versus uh, oxygen, because nitrogen needs more electrons to be stable. There's a tendency to form more bonds than oxygen. So nitrogen will be the central atom. Now the next thing we need to figure out is the distribution of electrons of the central atom to the surrounding atom. So let's look at this oxygen. This oxygen requires two additional electrons to be octet. So what you will do is you will share two electrons with the central atom and ask Nitrogen to share two electrons back. So this will be a double bond, and oxygen will get two electrons from nitrogen, so therefore oxygen will be octet and stable. Now let's look at the other oxygen. This oxygen will want to be exactly the same as this first oxygen, so we also try to form a double bond with nitrogen. Now what we have to keep in mind is we have to come back to nitrogen and we have to consider all the valence electrons of nitrogen. Nitrogen has altogether 5 electrons, so we have already drawn 4 of them. So it has an additional electron that we have to put it in. Now another thing that we need to take note of is nitrogen cannot expand of them. So if you draw this particular configuration, what we notice is about nitrogen, altogether we have 4 electrons, we have 8 electrons, and then we have 9 electrons which is not allowed. Nitrogen cannot expand of that. So therefore, nitrogen cannot share this second double bond. So therefore, we have to modify this particular bond. Nitrogen cannot share this double bond because it cannot expand of that. But oxygen still wants two electrons from nitrogen. So what we do is convert this double bond to a daily bond from nitrogen to oxygen. So therefore, this is a dot cross diagram for nitrogen dioxide. Now let us look at another example, sulfate, SO2 minus. Now, sulfur and oxygen, they are the same group. So basically, they require the same number of electrons to be stable. But sulfur, because it's in period 3, can expand of that. So potentially, it can form more bonds. So we'll put sulfur at the center because it can form more bonds with oxygen. Now, we have two additional electrons that we have to put it in to my sulfate. When we compare sulfur versus oxygen, oxygen is more electronegative, so the oxygen will be the one that takes these two additional electrons. In general, it's better for us to distribute the two additional electrons, so I'll give one additional electron to each oxygen. 
Now, once we have assigned the additional electron to this oxygen, we will want to account for the bond between this oxygen with a central atom. Now, this oxygen requires two electrons to be obtained. It already has one electron from this negative charge, so it only requires one more electron from the central atom, so it will form one bond with sulfur. So this oxygen on the left-hand side is accounted for all. This is a single bond between sulfur and oxygen. Now, this oxygen on the right-hand side is exactly the same. It requires two additional electrons to be obtained. It already has additional electron here. You just need one more electron from the central atom, so it will form a single bond with sulfur. Now, how about this oxygen at the bottom? This oxygen at the bottom requires two additional electrons to be obtained, so it wants to share two electrons with sulfur. Sulfur will share two electrons with oxygen to form a double bond between sulfur and oxygen. Now remember sulfur, because it's in period 3, it can expand of that, so it will form as many bonds as possible so that the overall configuration is more stable. Similarly, for this oxygen, it's the same as this oxygen at the bottom to form a double bond with sulfur. Now we also need to look back at the central atom and make sure all the valence electrons of the central atom are accounted for. Now sulfur has 6 valence electrons, so in this case you notice we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 uh, electrons. So all the valence electrons of sulfur are accounted for. Now lastly, we just need to put in the overall charge. And this will be the top cross diagram for sulfate. Now after this discussion, I hope that you have a better understanding on drawing the cross diagram. Now remember, the cross diagram is a systematic approach. It's never a trial and error. Now I have three examples written on the board. Nitrate, carbon monoxide, and ozone. Why don't you try to draw the top cross diagram of these three species? Solutions will be given in a later video. Do you also have a molecule or an ion that you have difficulty drawing the top cross diagram? Put it in the comment section and let me try to solve it for you in a later video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and share this with your friends. For more awesome JCH2 Chemistry video lessons, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have any feedback, questions, and suggestions to new video lessons, please drop them at the comment section. I'm also conducting JCH2 Chemistry classes at Bishan Central. Please visit my website for more information. Thank you for watching H2 Chemx. I'll see you next time.